Welcome to the Libertas Media Project. Here's your host, Brian Wilson. Well, welcome to the Almost Daily Pod. The stock market lost around 1,200 points today, proving once again the law of gravity is still as much a part of economics as the law of supply and demand. The next few hours, and most of all of tomorrow morning, the shining Illuminati of the financial pundits will be trying to win the crystal ball contest by correctly guessing what comes next. Now, personally, I'd wager on Stuart Varney over at Fox Business News, easily the most level-headed commentator on the Wall Street beat. On the other hand, there's always Powerball and Mega Millions. With a minimum of urban arson and mayhem, the Super Bowl is in the history books. Frankly, if any town was going to burn anything, I would have thought Boston was the best bet. But no, Beantown just reported a massive run on Kleenex and antidepressants. While I'm not a fan of either club, I tend to dislike dynasties immensely. Probably comes from my youth as a Brooklyn Dodger fan in the shadow of Yankee Stadium. So the Eagles' win made it a great game, in my opinion. It was also very good that no heavy objects were allowed in the TV room. The nonstop banal blatherings of Collinsworth and Michaels was revolting, especially in the second half. Their most notable Patriot bias came in Michaels' comment after the go-ahead Eagles TD that with only five minutes left to engineer another miraculous come-from-behind victory, Brady might just as well have a month. Yuck. Those two sounded like the CNN and MSNBC news anchors on Election Eve as the Trump votes rolled in. Right up to the end, and with Michaels doing the countdown math after every play, they just knew Brady would pull it off. Until he didn't. When, with time expired, his Hail Mary turned into a Hail No in the end zone, and Grankowski the Giant wound up on his ass surrounded by little green men. The redundancy of the Super Bowl was only outmatched by my colleagues in newsrooms across the dial who just had to say something about the dreaded Nunez memo. Throughout the weekend, it was dissected, bisected, analyzed, and analyzed by the usual collection of morons who couldn't cobble together an original statement, or better yet, observation of fact, that hadn't been broadcast and printed hours and days on each other's competition. It amazes me these dudes and dudettes apparently never learned the basics of news and the need to move the story to the next level rather than a constant repetition of everything the audience knows already. On the other hand, maybe there are way more cave dwellers avoiding reality than I know about. But with the stakes so high, why wouldn't everybody be paying attention? Never mind, never mind, that was a purely rhetorical question. Look, that's about it for the Almost Daily Pod. Watch this space. I'll try to be back tomorrow. Thank you for spending time with the Libertas Media Project. For the latest information on our podcasts, visit our Facebook page, facebook.com slash Libertas Media Project. Comments, questions, observations welcome. Please come back soon for our next podcast with Brian Wilson from the Libertas Media Project.